Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel, Hi Mathematics. Today we have a very interesting and tricky algebra question, x to the fourth power equal to x minus one to the fourth power. If you have your solution, your answer, you can also write your solution down into the comment section and then we will check your answers. Okay, so first of all, how can we, how can we solve it? Let's write this expression from the right side. Let's write it on the left side. So as a result, we have x to the fourth power minus this one, minus x minus one, x minus one, to the fourth power and of course equal to equal to zero. Right now let's look closely what do we have right here? X to the fourth power. We can easily write this x to the fourth power as x square to the second power. Okay, we can easily write it like that. And the same thing with this one, doesn't matter we have parentheses, but it changed nothing for us. We can write it as x minus one, x minus one. We can write it to the second power. And don't forget about these four powers. So we need to raise it once more, once more to the second power equal to equal to zero. So nothing changed. According to a basic um, math property, according to a basic uh, power rule, when we have a to the power x raised to the power y, we're going to multiply it as a to the power x times y. So it changed nothing. We're going to multiply 2 times 2. We have the same 4. We're going to multiply 2 times 2. We have the same the same 4. But if you look closely from, from another perspective, we have right here our difference of squares. If you look at this from another perspective, for example, this is our a, and this is our expression, this one, this is our b. So we can consider it as a square minus b square. But this is all known formula. Everyone know about it. So a square minus b squared. This is all known, maybe the most known formula in, in algebra. This is equal to a minus b times a plus b. And let's apply this formula uh, to our question. This is our a, this is our b, a, x squared is our a, x minus 1 to the second power is our, is our b. So let's apply, let's apply this uh, formula. And uh, what do we get as a result? As a result, we have x squared. So as a result, first of all, a minus b. So as a result, we have x squared minus b b equal to x minus 1 to the second power. So x minus 1 to the second power. This is our first parenthesis and absolutely the same parenthesis but with the positive sign. So as a result we have x square plus x minus 1, x minus 1 to the second power. And basic manipulation according to algebra we need to raise x minus 1 to the second power according to um, an all-known formula. Let's do this right now. So we have x square minus with parentheses, don't forget about it. So as a result, we have x squared minus 2x and plus 1, plus 1, yeah? And we're going to write the same thing with the second parentheses. So we have x squared plus, right here, we don't need parentheses, but of course, let, let's write it because maybe some, someone does this mistake. So we have x squared minus 2x and plus 1. Because of this addition, we don't need these parentheses, but like for better understanding, let's write it. So plus 1 and equal to equal to zero. Right now let's open parentheses. Right here we don't need these parentheses anymore because we have addition, so it changed nothing. But right here we have subtraction, so we need to change each of these sign inside these uh, parentheses. So let's do this right now. So we have the first thing x squared from here. And right here we have minus x squared and we need to change all these signs of so plus to x and minus one. This is one really important moment. And the second thing, we don't need these parentheses, we have addition, so it changed nothing, yeah? So we have x square plus x square minus 2x and plus one equal to equal to zero. Yeah, so we have two parentheses. It's really great. Right now, x square minus a, x square, we can easily cancel it. Yeah, we can easily cancel it in our minds right here. We don't need it. Right here, we can easily add x square plus x square. So as a result, we can get it two really in important uh, parentheses. So the first parentheses, 2x minus 1, yeah, 2x minus 1. And the second parentheses, from here we have 2x square, yeah, we have 2x square, 2x square minus 2x and plus plus 1. And from school you need to know that when you have a product of two parentheses, this product of two parentheses equal to 0, when the first parentheses equal to 0, or the second parenthesis is equal to zero. So let's start, for example, with the with on the left side. It's it's much easier for us to start with, because we have two x minus one is equal to zero, and from here two x minus two uh, x equal to one, and x equal to x first. And don't forget about it, because maybe we have two roots right here. Yeah, so x first equal to one one half. It's really great. Yeah. So let's leave it like that. And right now let's find our mm, another roots. Let's solve this equation. It looks like this is a quadratic equation because we have x squared, we have x, so we have 2x squared minus 2x 
plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, let's find our discriminant real quick with the basic method, um, the method of coefficients. So we have a equal to 2, b equal to minus 2, and c equal to equal to 1. So first of all, let's find our discriminant real quick. I prefer every time when I solve this quadratic equation, I prefer to solve, uh, to find real quick discriminant, and then I plug in it. Okay, so we have discriminant b squared minus 4ac equal to, we have b squared minus 2 squared minus 4 times a times 2 and times c times 1. From here we have minus 2 squared equal to 4 minus 4 times 2 times 1 equal to 8. So our discriminant is negative, so each and nothing for us, but we can easily say that we have only one real number root. Because when the discriminant is negative, it means that in this parenthesis we can find two complex roots, but doesn't matter, let's find it, let's find it, so our x second and third, second and third equal to minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over, all over to a, let's plug in each of these elements into this spot, we know everything, minus b, but b equal to minus 2, so we have minus b equal to minus 2, so minus minus 2, plus minus square root of discriminant, square root of minus 4, minus 4, and we're gonna divide it by 2a, 2 times 2a equal to 2, so we have 2 times 2. Let's simplify this real quick, let's simplify this a little bit. As a result, what do we have? Minus minus 2 equal to 2, so we have 2 plus minus square root of minus 4. We can easily write it as square root of minus 1 times 4, so we can easily split it as a product, yeah? And we're gonna divide it by 2 times 2 equal to equal to 4, okay? Right now, according to a square root property, we can easily split this expression. We can write it as 2 plus minus square root of minus 1 times square root of 4. We can easily do this, and we're going to divide it by 4. And our last step is to mm, find the square root of 4, and square root of minus 1, this is our imaginary unit. This is our i, so we have 2 plus minus i times square root of 4 equal to equal to 2, and we're going to divide it by we're going to divide it by 4. And our last step, we can easily divide each of these elements by 2. So this one, this one, and this one. As a result, we have only 2 in our denominator. Right here, we have only, only 1. So we have 1 plus minus i over, over 2. And right here, we can easily say that we find two mm, real, uh, two complex roots. The first one, of course, we can write it real quick, or let's write it as an answer. Let's do this. So our answer to this question, and after answer, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna say a few really important moments, because a lot of students forget about it. This is an extremely important moment. A lot of students mm, solve this question absolutely incorrect because of this stuff. Okay, so x second equal to, let's write with the positive sign one plus i over two, and x third equal to one minus i over two. This is our answer, everything is great, we're gonna check uh, one half a little bit later, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna say a few really important hints to this question, so on the left side. First of all, I'm gonna rewrite it, so x to the fourth power equal to x minus one to the fourth power. Few really interesting hints to this question. A lot of students might be thinking, maybe 90% of students solve this question like that, they, they do this mistake every time. Uh, they say, okay, four power, four, four, four power, we can easily cancel this. And as a result, we have, mm, we have our x equal to x minus one, then we, we, fact, we cancel this x, and as, as a result, we have zero equal to minus one. And then a lot of students get confused because of this and they ask me mm, what's what's wrong with this question how can we find it how can we solve it i just cancel this four power and i say okay you you do mm, correct thing you cancel four power if you wanna you can you can solve it like that but don't forget about the thing when you cancel in four power you it looks like in your head you're canceling this second part with the complex with the complex number because uh, and and it's not the best thing to solve this question like that you can easily do that if you have like mm, one minute uh, to enter your exam and you you need to uh, like hurry up to solve this question like that you can easily do this but this is a wrong approach if you want to cancel so just forget a little bit about it just forget a little bit about it if you want to cancel this question like that so i just wanted to show you another part so we have x to the fourth power equal to x minus 1 to the fourth power. If you want to solve this question, if you want to cancel this four power, if you wanted to apply this fourth root on both sides, yeah, I, I, I think you, you you understand what I mean. If you wanted to, if you want to uh, apply fourth root on both sides, if you want to cancel this fourth power, don't forget about the thing which is called absolute value, yeah? Absolute value x equal to absolute value x minus 1. Don't forget about this absolute value, because this is 
this is a bad solution, I would say. This is a really bad solution for your teacher, for you and for your teacher when you're canceling it and when you don't know what, what you're going to do next. If you want to cancel it, you can easily use absolute value. You can easily use this step. And then with the method of combination, you can easily find maybe this is positive, this is negative, this is negative, this is positive, positive, negative, and both negatives. And from this, uh, uh, from this approach, you can easily find one root x equal to one half. So if you want to solve it, you can easily get one one root. But why this method is not good? So this is the worst method I ever seen. If you want to cancel it, you need to put absolute value. If you put absolute value, you can easily find one real number root. You can easily find this x equal to one half. This is a great, this is a correct solution. I'm not gonna lie. But if you solve this question like that, you forget about complex numbers because with this method you can't find complex numbers. So if you're talking about a full, completely step-by-step -step explanation, this is what I mean right now, this is our method. Uh, this one, factoring according to this formula, both parentheses, and as a result you can easily say that you solve this question completely because uh, in this method you solve only you find only one real number root and this is a correct root if you if we check it real quick we have one half uh, to the power four equal to one half minus one oh minus one yeah to the power to the power four everything is great one half to the power four equal to uh, one over 16 I, I guess yeah from here we have one over 16 and from here we have one half minus one equal to minus one half, but because of uh, even power, we can easily reject. So we have as a result we have um, we have minus one half to the power four. Yeah, we have something like that. And because of this minus, we can because of this even power, we can easily skip this minus. So it looks like um, we're gonna have minus one times one half. Yeah, to the power four. So because of this four power, we can easily cancel this uh, positive uh, positive power, and as a result, we have absolutely the same thing. So one half is a correct answer, and I'm gonna underline it once more. If you wanna cancel fourth power, because a lot of students solve this question like that, and they don't know what, what they wanna do next, yeah, because zero equal to minus one, they're they're getting confused. If you wanna, if you don't have a time on your exam, yeah, you can easily cancel fourth power. This is a correct way, but with absolute value, and then you can easily find one real number root. But if you have a time, you can easily factor it, you can easily solve this question like that, and your teacher is going to be happy about this solution, because this is a correct way, how can you solve this, how can you solve this question. So thank you for your time, I really hope you understand my thoughts, uh, a lot of tips, a lot of a lot of prompts to this, to this question, but I, I wanted to underline it, I'm going to, I wanted to underline these uh, two really important steps, because a lot of students solve this question incorrect because of this because of this part and learn this learn this solution and i really hope you understand it i really hope you enjoy it so wish you all the best in life take care of yourself have a great day see you in the next videos